on March 11th, 2011, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake hit the Tohoku region on the northeastern Japanese coast. Nearly 20,000 people were killed. Months after locals of the village of Vishinomaki, many of the locals reported strange events. This is the haunting of Ishinomaki.緊急地震速報です。強い揺れに警戒してください。The village of Ishinaki sits in the Kitami River and has provided many opportunities for the locals. Much of the locals work on the ocean and waterfronts surrounding the town. Some of the villagers contributed to a brand seaweed called nori. The ocean has meant a lot and was a way of life for many people this coastal portside town and they all love the ocean until the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. At 2.47 on March 11th, the village and other parts of northeastern Japan were hit by the 9.0 earthquake. People that have inhabited this area of Japan have felt earthquakes before, and it's not that new to them. In 1896, they were hit by an 8.5, and 1933 at 8.4, and 1978 to 7.8. A city worker recounts the day of the earthquake. He states that once the earthquake hit, he knew a tsunami was coming. So using his emergency radio, he told residents to evacuate as quickly as they could, and he did everything they were trained to do, but... However, what they didn't expect was the size of the tsunami. あら。やばいよ、やばいよ。
the tsunami hit the coast of Japan with horrific force and speed. Many people couldn't leave or get to higher ground in time, and it was also growing in speed and height as it swallowed everything in its path. The city worker that issued the warning was still inside a building, and the ceiling above him caved in and all the lights started to break. The moment he felt he was in danger is when he felt a giant impact. The impact pushed him outside, and he couldn't tell if he was upside or down, and he thought this was the end, and he started seeing the faces of his wife and children. He tried his best to get to the surface and eventually succeeded, and he was carried away by the water, leaving and wondering where he was going. On top of all the carnage, it started to snow. And the snow didn't stop for the already drenched survivors. Many people felt completely defeated, and many wondered why the nature was being so cruel. The estimated height of the tsunami was 131 feet, and confirmed dead was 15,854. The number of missing is in the ballpark of 2,533. Even in the present day, many are still missing. The city worker from the beginning of the story was stated saying that he lost 54 of his co-workers in the tsunami. He described it as being hell and never wanted to experience it again. A survivor named Kazuya recounted the day of the tsunami and the day he found his family. He found his eldest daughter's body in the tree line of some bamboos. He said, some of the bamboos were bent and I saw my eldest daughter draped over one of them. She looked like she was sleeping. She was so beautiful. The body of his wife was a three minute drive away and from where his daughter was and a week or two after the earthquake they were clearing up debris and Kazuya was looking for his youngest daughter and he heard someone say, Hey, I found a baby. The baby's voice was sullen and covered in dirt. So he cleaned the face and recognized it was the youngest daughter. Due to the lack of fuel and electricity from the nuclear power plant, the crematorium wasn't functioning so many people couldn't properly mourn their loved ones. In Japan, they traditionally cremate their dead, but they forced to bury the dead in the ground and would eventually go back and exhume the bodies for cremation. The bodies came out of temporary holding places, and one by one, it was devastating, said a reverend of Ishinomaki. The first body I saw were two 15-year-old girls, and I was not able to read a mantra because I couldn't stop shaking, said the reverend. The reverend was from a temple by the name of Suisai. He's the 26th generation. He grew up in the temple and he went to college and later trained as a monk. Nothing could have prepared him for what happened after the earthquake. Three months after the earthquake, a Japanese author by the name of Shuji Okonoa, author of a book named Stay Near Me, was doing research for the book. Stay near me. He started hearing rumors of ghosts. By October, there was dozens of stories. So he started documenting these stories from people in Ishinomaki. One day, a man named Endo reached out to him. He had experienced something unusual. The man stated that he was visiting a shelter to see if his mom was there. He was told to wait there for her, so he did. While he was waiting, he saw a woman sitting by a window, wearing similar clothes to what his mom was wearing. He began approaching and realizing that it was his mom. He took a picture of her so his family would know she was safe. But as he lowered the camera, the woman's face changed into a person he's never seen before. He later found out that the microbus that his mom was in was hit by the tsunami and was swept away. Until August of 2013, Shuji continued searching for people's experiences. The people he would visit would frequently say on how desperate they were to see their loved ones. 
and they believed that they still wanted some type of message and was hoping that their loved and passed on ones would have messages for them. For example, a woman living in the fishing village of Ishukama lost her three-year-old son to the tsunami. Since then, she suffered from depression and anxiety. Inside her home was a deceased boy's toy. While they were having dinner one night, the mom turned around to the rideable toy train and said, Shochan, let's eat together. The mother turns around and a few seconds of silence follows. Then all of a sudden, the toy train started by itself. The toy had a manual switch inside an electrical one, so there was no way it could have just set off by itself. Before that night, the woman was very depressed and considering the idea of suicide. However, because of that incident, it was enough to keep her moving forward and knowing that her son was there with them. Other people were seeing ghosts in and around the village of Ishinomaki. One night, a woman got a knock on her door. A young woman, drenching wet, asked for dry clothes. And the women went and gave her dry clothes. She closed the door and nothing happened afterwards. The more credible experiences come from the cab drivers of Ishinomaki. Many of them would pick up people and by the time they would drop them off, many of these people, they look in their back seat and these phantom customers would be gone. One night a cab driver picked up a man and the man made the driver very nervous and something was just off about him. He arrived to the destination and looked back for the man and he wasn't there. The driver jumped out of the car looking for the man but he couldn't hear or see anyone or anything. The reason why these stories were more believable is because of the meters used by the drivers. And when asked who paid for the rides, the cab drivers would admit that they were the ones paying for the phantom customers. Many stated that they would do it again because they feel that they're helping the spirits move on. Many of the cab drivers had family members who were victims of the tsunami. And... Many of them didn't mind helping these people try to get home. As much of the houses that were swept away by the tsunami were not rebuilt, and most of the village is built about 50 kilometers inland. It is hard to say whether or not if people are just wanting to see their loved ones, and maybe this was just a trick of the mind, and perhaps they did see something that we'll just never be able to explain. However, whatever is happening in Ishinomaki, hopefully the victims of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami can find peace and their families be able to find the peace. Well, hello everybody. It's uh, Melodite63. Um, so today's video was uh, a little more uh, somber. And um, the reason why I did this video was because I'm, you know, I, I'm a little fascinated by natural disasters and how they happen, why they happen. And uh, actually, for those of you that don't know, uh, it was recently the 10 year anniversary for the Ishinomaki. Well, it wasn't just Ishinomaki, but the 2011 earthquake and tsunami that hit the northeastern coast of Japan. Um, and actually, a really interesting fact about this is that a lot of the... Um, belongings and parts of houses and buildings were actually swept as far as the uh, Oregon coast in the United States here. Um, so that was a really interesting fact that I found while researching this. And um, yeah, uh, many people are still missing even today. Um, it's most likely safe to assume that some of the bodies have most likely been swept out to sea, unfortunately, and have most likely have um, you know, uh, ha have most likely been probably consumed by most of the wildlife. Um, I'd be shocked if people will find, uh, any bodies at this point. Um, they'll most likely find bone fragments, but even then, you know, uh, 
teeth or anything would probably mean a lot to most of these families. So uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you like today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you're new to the Metal Dive family, I welcome you. Uh, stay a while. Uh, stay by the campfire. we got some cookies for you. And uh, we'll consider going for some hot dogs. I'm not too sure, but we'll, we'll think about it. You know, not everybody likes hot dogs. But to be honest with you, for some reason, hot dogs taste better when you cook them over a campfire. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, most importantly, let's stay mellow during these very rough times. And uh, I know today's video was a little somber, um, but also this, this story actually kind of creeped me out just a little bit. <laughs> so uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have a good day. Most importantly, once again, stay mellow.